Hello, my name is Donna Samuels and I'm a museum educator at the Rubin Museum of Art. We are located in Chelsea, Manhattan, where we explore Himalayan arts, cultures, and ideas. This week, we are continuing our daily offering video series in the hopes that we can offer ways to recenter and introduce everyday practices that would help us all get through these very strange times. The practice of today will focus on the importance of stillness because it is said that our reflections are the most clear and waters undisturbed. To explore this concept even further, today we'll be looking at the Bodhisattva Maitreya, also known as the future Buddha. Within this Tonkam painting from 19th century Tibet, Maitreya is seated upon a throne with his left leg resting on his right. His right hand holds a blooming flower, and his left hand rests on his left knee. In his hair is a triangle-like object called a stupa. This is a common characteristic associated with Maitreya. Within Buddhism, stupas are containers for relics of the Buddha or important Buddhist teachers and can range in size from a few inches to a few hundred feet. The landscape appears to be that of a hilltop, with greenery drawn at the throne base and clouds leading into a deepening forest in the background. A tree sprouts behind Maitreya, drawing your eye upward, and near the top right, you can see two deer grazing near the opening of a cave. This cave can be seen as a symbol of stillness and solitude. It is in these moments of stillness and reflection that one can deepen their experience with the world and themselves. To dive deeper in the concept of stillness, our host for today, Venerable Tenzin Piridarshi, will lead us in a practice. My name is Tenzin Priyadarshi. I'm a Buddhist monk. And I'm a founder of the Dalai Lama Center for Ethics and Transformative Values at MIT. I'm delighted to connect with you through the vast internet. And today, we'll focus on the image, the manifestation of Buddha Maitreya, the future Buddha. My first uh, encounter with Maitreya was uh, in a small village in Bihar, India, which was also the seat of a prominent Buddhist monastic university called Nalanda. Many uh, renowned masters of the past came from Nalanda. And there at Nalanda, I heard one morning that some farmer who was taking care of his land, and he had, while he was plowing the land, the edge of the plowshare had hit something uh, and sort of cracked the metal part of his plowshare. So they started digging, and there was this beautiful statue of Buddha Maitreya in black stone, uh, about four and a half feet tall, that was unearthed. Uh, but uh, the poor statue, the nose was slightly chipped off because of the plowshare hitting it. But otherwise, rather remarkable, rather beautiful statue. And uh, in the back, there was an inscription in Siddha, Ye Dharma He Tu Prabha He Tum Te uh, uh, which sort of roughly translates as that uh, the great wise sages of the past, the Buddhas of the past, have spoke of uh, all dharmas uh, being uh, fabricated, that everything comes together because of a variety of causes and conditions. And the wise one, is somebody who sees as such. However, today the focus of perhaps looking at Maitreya in a way that Maitreya is this connector of this infinite line of Buddha. Uh, even historical Buddha Shakyamuni said that he was not the first Buddha. And he would certainly not be the last one. And Maitreya, as he waits in the wings to appear in this world 
when the conditions are right. Reminds us of several things, but more importantly, the Buddha nature. Buddha nature, this idea that all sentient beings is born to become Buddha, that you and I, we all possess this illuminate nature of Buddhahood uh, that would become self-evident if we were to overcome ignorance, if we were to overcome attachment. But it's not just about unearthing our own Buddha nature, our own true nature, but it is also about seeing Buddhahood in others and seeing the Buddha nature of others. During this time of pandemic, of course, uh, one of the things that has become now old fashioned uh, is shaking hands. So shaking hands is not encouraged. Uh, hugging people is not encouraged, but is uh, quite a custom in the Western countries. And so uh, perhaps let me reintroduce to you uh, another greeting from my home country, from India, which is Namaste. And we do it from a distance, but it is the intent that needs to be focused on this intent that as I put my palms together, as I bow to you, the idea that I am making an effort to see the Buddha nature in you, that I hope and I wish and I pray that you too will become a Buddha in the future. And this is something deep in, in Buddhist philosophy and Buddhist practice, that a Buddha is what a Buddha sees, a Buddha is what a Buddha does. This idea that that if I can see the purity of all things, if I can see Buddha nature in all things, then effortlessly the sense of reverence, effortlessly the sense of bonding, effortlessly the sense of friendliness, this Maitreya st stands for, that it simply oozes through our very being. And we are able to bow and gaze at the other with deep respect and say, I bow to you because you too will become Buddha. And whether you are Buddhist or not, but this idea to find purity, to find goodness in others, and to recognize it, to acknowledge it, and to bow to it, is a tremendous practice that all of us can engage in at any point uh, in time. And this is a deep sense of preparedness that let's create a world of enlightened beings. Let's create a world where we encourage each other to be enlightened. Let's create a world where we want to deeply embed ourselves in a network of friendliness, true friendliness, uh, of seeing each other, growing together, and recognizing that we all can become better than what we are at this present moment. And those of you who wish to, you're welcome to leave comments in the section below, which is a way of enriching and enlivening the community that we are creating. Thank you.